Kid, seriously. We're going to we're going to do something we've never really done. We're going to revisit a past topic cuz we had a, a topic of the week a long time ago at the start of the NFL season. Well, that could be really dangerous when you talk about that because we make all sorts of predictions that turn out to be not true. So it's always very dangerous to go back and revisit the things that we've said before. Although this time, I'm thinking it might turn out good. Go ahead. Well, yeah, but in the same point when you made the the bold statement that... No! <laughs> I don't want to talk about what that. What has Donald Glover ever done? Anyway, we, we talked about you talked about NFL quarterbacks because right. there are a lot of rookie quarterbacks that entered this season, and you you watch a ton of college football. You watch a ton of NFL football. You're our resident football expert. So you ran through a bunch of guys that I honestly hadn't heard of most. I've heard of Baker Mayfield, and that was about it out of them, and, the, and Darnold. I'd heard of those two. But uh, we are now, you know, there's one week left in the NFL regular season, so we've gotten to see these guys. So... Mercifully, there's <laughs> one week left. <laughs> Well, the NFL season. Yeah. It's been a rough one for me. Yeah, it's been a rough one for you, and I think it's going to have a pretty sad ending next weekend for me. But the uh, the one thing I wanted to revisit is how these, what was it, seven? Oh, I didn't count. Seven I quarterbacks, I believe. Five, I've got. We have five quarterbacks that we are going to, re- I wanted to revisit and get your thoughts of what you think of them now that they have a season under their belts. So, why don't you pick with which one you want to start with, and let, let's talk about some of these NFL quarterbacks. We're going to go in order of, of draft, and so we start off with the first overall pick. This is the superstar. This is the lightning rod. It's Baker Mayfield. He was the Heisman winner from Oklahoma. Ironically, um, there's another um, uh, Kyler Murray, the uh, or Kyler Murray, the uh, current quarterback at Oklahoma, also won the Heisman this year. Um, he's only five foot eight. And actually wow. signed with the Oakland A's. There's hope for me. Yeah, so I'm five foot eight. But Baker Mayfield is not five foot eight, and he didn't begin the year as a starter. He came off the bench and he got like this huge win. I actually see it up late. It was a Thursday night game, um, and it was towards the beginning of the season. That was the first Browns victory, and then Hugh Jackson was kind of like he was the coach at the time, and he was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna start him, and then eventually they started him because he was really freaking good. Um, like I said, he's been a huge lightning rod uh, for controversy, but he's white, so people love him. Uh, he's like Jim McMahon. That's who he reminds me of. He takes photo shoots with tigers. Uh, he got his coach fired. Uh, he wouldn't go in for the hug. Like Hugh Jackson went to coach with the Bengals, who's like an inner conference or inner division rival. And like after the game when they played, like Jackson went for the hug and he like backed up. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. Um, and he says funny shit like, uh, "I woke up feeling dangerous." Like, well, and as we all know, he's a he was a mad yelly for MVP supporter. In Major League Baseball, he had oh, yeah, he, he ended some some press conferences with the the Yelly for MVP, which we all know came true. And as you sit here in your Cubs pajama pants, you uh, you obviously are a big supporter of that. Well, I don't care. I think Baker Mayfield's awesome. He's hilarious. Yeah. So even you know Yelich opinions aside, uh, the good news for the Browns is they're just under five hundred, which is like a huge improvement. And well, and a shot year. next week to go five hundred, which Steeler right. fans desperately need because they need the Browns to win so they can make the playoffs. Which is great. But yeah. a, a Browns to go from zero and sixteen to a, above five hundred for that franchise is insanity. Yeah, I mean he's he has twice as many touchdowns as picks, and people love just everything about him. You know, he was the guy. When they drafted him, I was like, holy crap, because air raid quarterbacks are always looked down on in the NFL. And he was a little bit shorter. And How short is he? I think he's I think he's six foot, but it's okay. like one of those Russell Wilson six foots or one of those Aaron Rodgers six two when everybody's like, You're shorter than I thought. Like, yeah. I think I think that was kinda like, you know, on the tippy toes. Something like that. So Vince McMahon entered his stats in. Right. For right. Him. Yeah. <laughs> six foot nine. Yeah. Uh three hundred and fifty pounds. No, um he, I mean he's done great and he's been worth the first pick and, and that administration, which comes from uh you know, Dorsey comes from the, the, the Packers and Ted Thompson, that sort of thing. I mean they're known to take chances on, on quarterbacks, you know, when they when they when that crew drafted Aaron Rodgers, it was kinda like, What are you doing here? And that was how, you know, people felt about Baker Mayfield and so he's really uh he's really kind of proved the doubters wrong. So the system I want to run with on these five guys is I want you to tell me if they uh, met, exceeded, or were below your expectations. He exceeded my expectations. I was very, I was one of the people very concerned because um, we just haven't had a lot of air raid quarterbacks who've done well in the league. 
Explain what that means. So the air raid is a system that was created by Hal Mummy, who is, um, he was the coach of Kentucky in the 90s. And he basically taught Mike Leach, or he worked with Mike Leach to develop this system that basically, it's a wide receiver focused system that works on a lot of option routes. So depending on what the alignment of the defense is, the wide receiver's route will switch. And so uh, it really, works really awesome, and, uh, and I love it. It's my favorite system, um, but it's very easy for quarterbacks because you make a lot of pre-snap decisions, and then you just usually focus on one or two, one guy or maybe two reads on a really complicated pay, play. So it's like it's a perfect offense for, for quarterbacks, and so you get stats like Cliff Kingsbury, who is the new offensive coordinator at my USC. Um, you know, I watched a game at uh, the University of New Mexico when I was a student there for a little while. And Cliff just destroyed it with the air raid. I mean, just picked apart the Lobo defense. It was good. It was a good defense too. So um, you know, it's 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 an awesome system. But the NFL is all about old school, and they want that six foot four guy. You know, and and what Hal Mummy and Mike Leach always realize is you don't need that that real tall, strapping buck quarterback. You need a dude who's accurate. And so, um, but you know. Between Baker Mayfield and Pat Mahomes, I think people are starting to come around to <laughs> every quarterback. Right. So um, he exceeded expectations. Let's move on to the third overall pick is Sam Darnold from USC. And when we talked last time, I uh, I wasn't hopeful on his. Uh, you know, and, and he is the quarterback that I watched the most, that I knew the most. Man, he fucking sucks. Uh, he never met an interception that he didn't like. And despite how he, well he looked today against Green Bay, uh, which, as I was writing this, they were in the lead, he's been horrible, and he's about to get his coach fired. Uh, you can see, you're going to start seeing a theme here. Baker Mayfield's coach got fired. <laughs> Sam Darnold's coach got fired. And let me, let me just take a quick aside to talk about the things that have happened. I'm always going to bring it back to Green Bay. Take a, a quick aside to talk about the things that have happened since Mike McCarthy got fired. And I'm serious here, okay? Mike McCarthy got fired, asked for permission from the general manager and the current head coach, Joe Philbin, whose son you really hate, but I don't think you have anything against Joe Philbin. He asked if he could he could address the team and the coaching staff, which he was allowed. And apparently, like, he got, like, a standing ovation, and there were tears and stuff like that from the things that he said to him. He took out two full-page ads in Milwaukee and Green Bay, thanking the fans for all their support and the organization for keeping them as long as he did. But the greatest thing is there are teams that are trying to contact him right now, and if they have a current head coach, he will not talk to them. He refuses to talk to any team with a current head coach because he doesn't think it's the right thing to do. He could be screwing himself. I guarantee uh, we've been talking about the Browns, and I know he's he's from western Pennsylvania, so it would be very close. I mean, he's a Pittsburgh guy, but it would be very close to him or, you know, for his family um, to go to to Cleveland. And... um, but like the Jets, that seems like a total ones. Jets move, to, right? <laughs> to be, you know, have, be, be trying to date six girls at once, right, and right. not getting any of them. And one thing I want to say about Mike McCarthy is, okay, Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest talents at the quarterback position. I think you would agree with that. But everybody forgets that his throwing motion was completely redone in the first four years of his professional career, and people also forget that um, how much guys like Matt Hasselbeck and Brett Favre talked about how great Mike McCarthy was. They also forget that he made Jake DeLome a starting quarterback in the Super Bowl. Think about that for a second. And Aaron Brooks, he convinced you that Aaron Brooks was a good NFL quarterback. (laughs) This guy can coach quarterbacks. So a lot of the teams that we talk about who have really sucked and need a guy, Mike McCarthy may end up there. So don't be surprised if he's the guy that's teaching Sam Darnold. But when you ask the question... Has he met, exceeded, or not met my expectations? He has gone even lower than I thought as bad as he would be. Sam Darnold never met an interception he didn't like. Never, I mean, he just, he's way too careless with the football. And um, it sucks because he left USC early. I don't want to seem bitter, but man, he's he's not good. Oof. We go now to uh, Josh Allen. It's uh, the Southern United States favorite of these quarterbacks. He was the seventh pick from Wyoming, and uh, he sucks too. He's got <laughs> six touchdowns and nine interceptions. I don't even know what team he's on. He's uh, the Bills. Sorry. The Bills. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So uh, his coach is almost certainly going to be fired. <laughs> 
Uh, he came out before the draft with some unfortunate KKK style tweets from his youth, and it, and ever since then his stock has gone lower. But Josh Hader so, has his jersey, so it's who fine. does? But I'm sure Josh Hader oh, yeah, bought his jersey. I'm sure Josh Hader and him <laughs> hang out. Um, he does have a signature win against the Vikings, which is pretty funny. Yeah, and he has like a really cool running play. But he's run for almost one... Th- he's not a running quarterback, and he's run for almost one-third of the yards he's passed for, and he's not been hurt. Like, Ooh. they don't let him pass. Like, and he's not good. Was he projected to go that high, or is this the Bills being yeah, the Bills? I mean, he was? Yeah, okay. when we watched him, I mean, before we found out that he was basically uh, a total dick, uh, and he has apologized and all those things that sure, you sure. say... Um, but we watched the uh, my father and I watched the the bowl game with Wyoming because I specifically wanted to see him play. And the dude has a rocket arm; he's got arm strength like like Jay Cutler. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't have the decision making prowess of Jay Cutler. And you know how bad that was as you watched yeah. MC Norris. So yeah, uh, Josh Allen even worse than I expected. Next, we're gonna go with Joshua Bollinger Lippincott Rosen. Josh Rosen. Cardinals. Was your guy. This was my guy this after your, your descriptions guy. of yes. them. Yes. Uh, he was the 10th overall pick. I don't think it's gone well. From UCLA. And um, he was known for having his liberal opinions, which was pretty cool. As guys like That's us probably why he was my guy. Um, and he also got even cooler because he had a hot tub in his dorm room, which is That's even cool. better. And, uh, but being from UCLA, which was decidedly less cool. So like, oh. when you talk but I've been to that campus brand, and it was so. pretty. This is another, this is another, uh, guy that I, or another team that I think is after Mike McCarthy. Again, you have oh, a Cardinals. completely arrogant quarterback, um, who thinks his shit doesn't stink. It's, it's almost like perfect to bring in Mike McCarthy a year after he was drafted. He fell in the draft. You know, he's supposed to be the number one overall pick. He was the most polished um, so it, it would be like history repeating itself in, in a lot of ways. I feel ways. like the Cardinals would be a place too, where you get more patience than say the Jets. Well, I don't know. Cause they're, cause their new coach has been there That's for one true. year and his ass is getting out of there. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, he's been terrible. Uh, word out of Arizona, like I said, they're going to make a change this season. So we talked about these quarterbacks and you know, his, his completion percentage, I think is the third out of these guys and it, which is completely unacceptable. He was the most polished of these all of these these quarterbacks and just hasn't panned out. I mean, he's he's been bad. He's been real bad. So, uh, does he let, have any signature wins? Not that I know of. Does, oh, okay. Does, does Arizona have any wins? I thought they beat the Packers. Oh, I was... <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> is Anyways, that really, is that a signature win? Probably not this right. year. No. Last and certainly not least, my guy, Lamar Jackson, for the Baltimore Ravens. He was picked thirty-two, so the last quarterback in the first round and he's an african-american so that's what made him fall in the draft (laughs) so that's what i'm sticking to because everybody has bitched and moaned about his throwing motion even though he was extremely accurate in college well guess what out of all of these dudes he has the second highest accuracy and the second best Actually, I think he might even be better than Baker's. But out of how many? Because Flacco's still there, starting, right? Yeah, yeah, not anymore. Oh, Flacco doesn't start anymore. No, Lamar is the starter. Okay. Uh, He got hurt, and then then Flacco came back, and they're like, no, fuck it. We're just just going with Lamar. So it's a good sample size. Yeah, I mean, he's... he's, he's, I was picturing in my head, like, trick plays and last two-minute type stuff. They did that at the beginning of the year. Okay. But now he is the guy, so... Um, it just announced, oh, he, they, they beat the chargers. I want to say this week and they almost beat the chiefs. And so they're beating good teams now. And they're in the, as, going into this next week, if they beat the Browns are in the playoffs. Right, right. And it was just announced that John Harbaugh, even though he wasn't expected to this whole entire time, he's the guy who, out of all these coaches, that's going to keep his job. So the guy who who drafted the quarterback that nobody liked and he couldn't have, you know, the the mental prowess is what all the analysts said and didn't have the throwing motion, was more of a ru- or runner than a passer and all this crap. Uh, it's his coach that gets to keep his job. So um, people said he fell because he couldn't be accurate. He's more accurate than anyone than Mayfield. So it's been fun because the guys that everyone questioned have had the best season and the surefire guys have sucked balls and gotten dudes fired and maybe you should take college careers into account once in a while when you draft a racist who went to Wyoming. (laughs) Go Pokes. (laughs) And on that note, we are going to call it a day. So, my good friend, winner of today's challenge and NFL expert, where can they find you on Twitter? 
Well, I'm at Maya Madrid whenever I'm on Twitter, which isn't a lot. I don't think you've days. tweeted in like two months. But I haven't. That's fine. Most of the times when I do tweet, it's not that interesting. But you can still see it anyway. I'm at Luke underscore Neitzel. Our missing compatriot, uh, Mark Neitzel, is at Wink Martindale 5. Des- definitely no underscore on that, no, even no though he underscore. doesn't know that. And together we are at Kid Seriously, and we will see you next time. <laughs>